Well, hey everyone, I am so glad you're here with us. We're gonna get ready to uh, start our Cabinet Painting 101. I hope you have some questions ready for us and maybe some problems that you have already discovered in your own projects that you may need some help with. And uh, Melissa is here and she's gonna be answering those questions. I'm gonna try and answer them for you live. So if you have some areas in your home that are things you have that are problems or some, some areas that you don't know how to get around, stay with me and I'm going to share those th as much as I can and uh, show you something really quickly here before we get started. First off, uh, if you're with us here on our Facebook page, you may be wondering or asking yourself, why would I choose this brand of paint over other brands that I am familiar with? Well, I hope you know about all-in-one paint, but if you don't, let me hit the high points and uh, show you, and I'm gonna demonstrate to you how durable this product is. First off, it is easy to use, and uh, unlike a lot of other products out there, there is no sanding and there's no sealers needed. It also works for your outdoor projects, just like it works for your indoor projects. So there's no mystery about all the different types of paint. So when you're trying to figure out what you need to do, colors you need to use. There's a lot of unanswered questions and people get very uneasy. Sometimes causes them not to even do their projects. So this helps you using all-in-one paint to figure out exactly what you need to do by having not so many things that you need to be an expert about. All you need to do is just really know a few things, clean and paint. So first thing, it is a super durable paint. This is a little door that's been painted here who knows when. It's in our beautiful color linen. It's an oak door as you Oh, is this almond? Oh, sorry. I thought you said it was linen. Sorry. So I'm going to show you using my red lipstick, the one I'm wearing right here. I'm going to show you how beautiful this paint cleans. This is a very oily lipstick, the one I happen to like. And uh, I'm going to use our brush cleaner. If you didn't know about our brush cleaner, then those of you who do, you know it's a wonderful product. It's not harsh, has no smell whatsoever. Just putting a little of it on a rag, and I'll just show you how easy this paint will wipe up, clean up and look like new just by using the brush cleaner. Just give it a good scrub around there and you can remove stains that easily on your cabinets and uh, get that red right off of there. So if you've got kids and you've got areas in uh, your kitchen and maybe in your bathroom where sometimes you get cosmetics, you get grease, you get stains, whatever, you can clean it up using the brush cleaner if you have it on hand already. I can uh, even use a little bit of deglosser that will also take away oily and greasy stains too. So if you have the brush cleaner, try it. It's non-harsh. If you don't, try the try our uh, deglosser. That will get you cleaned and ready to go. Now I'm going to show you some things about color because I think that's the next hang up that people have is uh, color. Always trying to figure out what works for you and uh, we have a new product that I think is going to help people really to discover the color that they want so much easier than the little color card that we send out for free. These are our new peel and stick samples. And I think uh, I'm gonna do a shade of white on this tonight, but matching up to this countertop is probably the best cue that I have for someone who's asking what shade of color should I go with? Well, if you have a countertop that has some warmth to it, if you put something cool by it, and these lights are probably flushing these out so harsh, but I'll just share with you the names of these and you can kind of get the gist. This is our color called Colosseum. It has a gray undertone. And I'm gonna put that near this and you can kind of see that this looks pretty cool up against that. So in other words, it's gonna really bring out the grays in it when I put it near something that's creamy like this countertop. So I'm gonna say that would be a no for me for that one. A pure white. You might want to bring out a pure white in it. This is cashmere. There's a pure white almost uh, in this, but is it, again, it's not that bright white. It's a toned down white, more like our linen or bone. So you can get all of these in a series of five pack. And they're how much, Mel? How much are the five samples? Nine? Eight, eight dollars and change. Dollar. Eight dollars and change. So that's going to get them all coming to your door. Uh, that's including the shipping. So we're going to use the color linen here tonight because the background of this is pretty warm. And this is a very common countertop color, granite color. This is uh, a fake granite look. And that really, that actual real stone is super popular also. So you're going to get five of these whites and that's going to help you. And I'm not going to keep going over the color because they're so flushed out. You can't see them anyway. I just really wanted to show you how easy these make it. The corner peels off. Don't take the whole back off of these when you get them. Just leave that on there so you can see the number, see what you have. You take the whole back off. Now you don't know what if you've ordered several what you have. Just use the corner 
and stick it up with the corner like that. There's no need in removing the whole back. And then when you're finished and made your decision, just flip that corner down and now you'll have these for future reference for other projects. And if you need then to stick them up again, you can use scotch tape, of course, or just peel that corner down and just do that. Just keep them. Don't take the whole back off. There's no need in doing that. That way you can know what you're looking at. I'm going to get started and show you how, we, just like we talked about earlier, we want to talk about if you have problem areas in your cabinets. Maybe you have peeling cabinets. Maybe you have so many people always differentiate and say, I have trailer cabinet trailer cabinets. They're trying to say they have a laminate cabinet or where there might be some delaminating areas. Maybe it's peeling off or maybe there's some chips or some corners missing or you're seeing some bad areas. You need to take care of those before you paint because remember if you paint over something that isn't stable, meaning uh, areas of peeling paint or where it's already starting to show lines or cracking, you need to sand that area off and then do the cleaning process. So sand it with a sanding block. So and only if you have only, those kind of failing Only surfaces. if you have a yeah. failing surface. Don't paint over that because that's going to come back and cause you problems. That means there wasn't a good original bond. So you don't want to put your new paint on something that didn't bond well. So how to take care of it, use a sanding block, get it off of there, and then you're on to the, this step. You're going to pick up our Surface Prep Deglosser. It's a non-smelly, easy to use product. And you're just going to dip your brush right in there or your scrubby pad, whichever you choose, and just brush it onto your cabinets. Just put on a good little liberal coat. Dip it right in there. Doesn't matter. Like I said, it doesn't bleach. It's not a bleach. The only thing I always caution you about, if you have glass or mirror and you're working around glass and mirror, this cannot get on to glass and mirror. It will make a smudge and you cannot get it off. There is no cleaner to get it off. It permanently will etch mirrors and glass, so just know that. So I'm just going to rub the whole thing down with the cleaner. I'm going to let it sit here a minute. You might want to let yours sit on there a while if you've got really greasy, grimy cabinets. Somebody had asked in the group about uh, the cabinets over the stove. So That's a perfect place to let it you sit. You want to really put it to it. You may have to clean them twice. You're going to have sure. to feel them. Yeah, and also look at your rag. If your rag comes back filthy dirty and you're thinking you're done, just give it another clean. Make sure that that rag is clean. You want to remove that. Oils and grease are the reason that paint will fail nine times out of ten. This is the best product to ensure that you have a great bond. So don't skip this step. Don't fringe. Don't uh, skimp around on this step. That is the most important thing you're going to do. You don't want to do this twice. You want to make sure Look at that. This is a new door. Filthy. This is a new little vanity. So well, we dirty. Been doing some construction. <laughs> yeah, we've been doing construction in here, but all of that is going to prevent, you know, getting a good bond on your piece. So you want to be sure and do that. Now you're going to open the doors and do the same. We've already done that here. I'm just showing you here how to do it. And I'm going to talk about back the uh, kick plate down here too. This doesn't have one. But... Oh, quick. We have a question from Carolyn. She's Hi, Carolyn. No difference, Carolyn. You're not trying to remove the shine. This product doesn't. Because it says deglosser, it actually doesn't make the shine go away. So I see so many of you here in the group saying, well, I've already used it. How many times do I keep applying it? My piece is still shiny. Don't get scared that you're not ready to paint. If you've wiped it down well, even if it's still extremely glossy, maybe you're painting Formica, maybe you're painting a countertop, you're not going to knock that off with this product. So it's just removing the oils and the grease. It doesn't remove the shine or the sheen always. Sometimes it will dull it, but it's not always, but you're still ready to go. So just know if your rag's clean, you're ready. So let's, uh, this is the step that I would take if I was working in a really grimy, dirty kitchen. And because this is a new piece, let's just go over that. I don't want to skip on that. Use a little scotch Brite pad or something like this from your sink and get in there and just scour it around. Like if you're above that hood, that's something. Knock it down with this. Loosen that grime up and then wipe that away. So don't skip on that. You want to be sure. Look at that. That got that much more off of that. And I'd already wiped it down. But just using that scrubby got that much more to come off. So now let's talk about a few things. So many of you say <clears throat> when you're working with whites, you have a hard time getting coverage and uh, you, you are expecting it to look like something uh, sprayed on. 
and you can achieve those results if you'll follow the techniques that I'm sharing with you here tonight. I'm going to show you how to get on the first ugly coat and that's going to be with a true applicator and then the next coat I'm going to put on with a brush and roll. So I'm going to start on one door with a true applicator and then I'm going to do the one here beside of it brush and roll. So I'm going to show you what a coat looks like the first coat doing both. It's up to you. You do any way you want. You can you can put it on with the true applicator or doing brush and roll. It's really kind of up to you and the process you enjoy doing. I'm going to be using my little caddy here tonight. Oh, but can I jump in for absolutely. Go so, right ahead. Uh, a lot of you have questions on Facebook and I can't answer you in the comments because Facebook got me blocked for a minute here. We put too many links in. I was in. inviting too many people to this event. Sorry. So, um, Paula's going to cover a lot of those throughout, so just stay on with us. And any that she doesn't, we'll kind of do a good Q&A at the end, and I will go back and make sure that we capture all of those. But a lot of you are asking about wood grain, and that is on, is on our topic list. Wood grain is always on the topic list. So <laughs> I'm going to give you that quick overview. This is a pretty grainy cabinet, so you're going to see why it's going on here. And it will soften wood grain, but that doesn't mean it's going to make it go away. Here's a cabinet door that has wood grain. And this is an oak door. This is a heavy oak door also. It's a raised panel door. Lots of grain here, but you cannot see the grain in this cabinet door. If you want it to go away, there's grain fillers out there, but you're talking about a big sanding and a messy process. That's, basically That's a lot of work. All of your cabinet it's, doors, sanding them all. it's like plastering your cabinets. I'm just going to use the tree applicator and turn my tree applicator right up onto the pint. I took it out of the little caddy here just so I can it works show for you. A as well. Yes, it does. So you can do it either, whatever size you have. So let's just get on our first little coat. We are going to open the doors. We are going to paint inside the doors. Notice we're painting with the doors on. That is a method that we practice. Doesn't mean you have to do it that way. It's up to you however you want to do it. Whatever you feel like works best for you. But I like painting with the doors on. I think it makes my life a lot easier. It makes me want to tackle this project. I probably wouldn't even dream of doing it if I thought I had to take all the doors off. If I had a big kitchen, um, maybe a small project, I would probably think taking them off uh, would work for me. But not when it's a big project that I know. And we decided on the color linen for these. Yes, this is linen. So I put that on with the true applicator. I'm just going to go around and stipple this. And that's going to help me smooth out some of those drag marks and just make it look a lot more smooth. So this original dirty coat, we call it the old uh, ugly coat. Sorry. Did it become the dirty coat? I don't know, but I like dirty coat. That's pretty good. It looked dirty here. Uh, our ugly dirty coat is going to have it's got a middle name stripes. Now. Yeah, it's its middle name. The stripes, I thought when I said that, didn't sound right. Um, so anyway, we got our little stripes kind of softened up by just stippling them using the true applicator. So I'm doing this left-handed. So if I look awkward, I am. I'm trying to keep out of your camera so you can see me here. So now you could open the door back and uh, let's just do that. Can you see me well there? So while I have that going, I'll just put on my little, my little uh, ugly dirty coat here on the back too. Get that done. And then we're gonna trim around the hinge. I know some of y'all won't stay with us the whole time. I hope you do. You can, but I think it makes your job look like you did a very kind of a shoddy job. So now that's my opinion. So. But we have done it before. The hinges are in really bad Old. Shape. Yeah, old rusties. Yeah. And painting them is an improvement. Paint them. We have painted them. If no. They're, if they're decent, then I would avoid painting them just because it'll make your job look. Uh, we were powerful. just we were just working on some furniture down at Tanya at Tanya's house and y'all painted all the hardware painted right over it with yeah. the gel stain yeah. made it look great but we kind of made it part of the look of the project so that was uh, something we decided early on we're gonna paint over the hardware and we're gonna go back and rub it back work great but now these type hinges using our artist brush just taking that artist brush going right in here and going around these hinges that to me is the easy way so everybody's different have you a little rag on hand so then you can wipe off anything you get on there i keep little q-tips q-tips great yeah. you can get right around the frame of the door too Jalen says she's so excited uh she's wanting to see needing to see about how you paint around the frame when you leave the doors on that's what she's confused oh, about paint around the this interior frame yeah. okay we're going to do that next Jalen. so stay with us 
This brush helps in a lot of ways, like in little tight corners. You can get that with your true applicator, but you can just take your little brush while you got it handy here and just run it right around on the inside of this lid and knock that out too. Just make sure you've got everything. Look it over. Get down here around this one. This is called a Euro hinge. So this has almost like a strap and it bolts on, basically clips on to the door. Unlike an, a traditional old hinge that's got screws and so on in it, this kind of does a different thing. They look like they're so easy to deal with. They're so difficult to line back up and to get them back so your doors will close properly. So if you take one off, know what you're doing before you progress and take your whole kitchen down. They're not easy to get lined your doors back level and even the projection from how they sit off the back or off the wall of the cabinet or the frame of the cabinet, hard to get back. I uh, have even thought about one time just leaving the doors off my cabinets whenever, <laughs> when I tried to put them back on. <laughs> As I could think of these look good open. I believe I'll just leave them off. They're difficult. So using my little brush, I'm just going to go around this little rail of this. Just want to paint right around the interior frame. You don't want to roll back into the cabinet itself because that's where you need to stop. Sometimes people wonder, where do I stop? Right around the underside of this. There's just about a half inch board that's the actual face frame of this door. That's where you want to stop. You can do the same. You get right up under here while you have this underneath this drawer. While well, you got your little brush out, and that's going to help you get in a lot of tight areas. These little brushes are so handy, and I love them so much. It's our Syntec fiber. These are our, our, our artist brushes that are available on. They're on detail brushes on the website. Yep, detail, detail, artist. There you go. Okay, so that will get you that part of the frame. There's no little piece in the middle here of this cabinet, no support bar in the middle, but you get the idea. If there was one, you just paint right over it. Same here. I'll get this drawer with my true applicator. And then we're going to move over and do... Tracy agrees with you about trying to fool with your own They're fussy. They are. They just look like, oh, that'd just be so simple to get that back on there. It's just not. Am I blocking you where you can't see? Nope. This just makes life so easy. You don't get any paint on anything on the sides. It just carries, it just runs right along the rail there. So it doesn't lip over anything. Now I will say for doors, or drawers, I mean, we do usually take those out. We have had some that were kind of painful and we've left them in, but typically we do take them out just because they're not hard to do. They're not hard at all to and take out. It makes out. for an ugly demo. So for you guys, we normally leave them in. We leave it in. Yeah, you can take it out if you want. That way you can paint around the little face frame so easily. But I like just getting it right here done. So there you go. So You're doing a really light stipple, right? I'm doing a very light stipple. I'm not taking out my worldly frustrations on it. <laughs> <laughs> so just do a very light stipple. I'm going to get into my Syntec brush here. And if I, if I wanted, I could just continue using my little brush. But I'm just going to get in my big brush now because I'm going to go over here and do a brush and roll technique on this door. I'm going to show you both. So my, my preference is this. I like to do this, what I did here, get on that coat of paint, let that dry. Whites take longer to dry than colors sometimes, depending on moisture in the air, the humidity where you are working, as well as uh, the climate that you live in, you're going to find paints take longer to dry. But whites typically take a little longer because they're full of titanium which is uh, acting different than colors, let's say. And once this is dry, you're going to put on your second coat, dry to the touch. And sometimes people say it's not wanting to uh, paint over so easily. It's trying to remove paint a little. That means it's not dry enough. If you ever take your brush to the door and it looks like it's trying to soften up that layer below, stop and let it dry some more. Take another little break, come back, maybe even to the next day. Let that harden up really well. The great example for that to me is end panels of cabinets. Sometimes uh, the end panel, the broom closet, some things on the refrigerator end caps have a vinyl picture of wood on them. If you put on this ugly coat and you go back and try to paint it too quickly, you'll see that the paint wants to kind of separate and all those fancy things it will do and it looks like it's not going to bond. Do the stippling technique using this right here, stipple and let that coat dry. Come back the next day, allow that a full day to dry. You won't see any more separation. It'll be easy for the, you to then paint over and carry on and make it all match. So 
Sometimes patience is key and painting with whites always requires you just to have a little bit of patience to uh, get it to look great. So now let's go on to our next coat. Oh, we've got a couple questions. Okay. Sure. Terry's wondering, should we use a Kills primer before painting white over oak? Uh, well, we always say this, you know, uh, everybody's uh, old school painters think differently. So I am from the mindset that it is exactly the same work to put on primer as it is to do these two techniques. I can paint the white in three coats. If you, if I were to put on a primer, it'd still take me the primer and two coats of white. And I will give you a good example of that. You ever had white doors that you bought that were pre-primed and you hung them in your house thinking, oh, they're already white, won't be hard. It will at least take you two coats of white to cover those primed doors. So white paints in general just don't have the ability to hide dark from within. It's almost like you're wearing a white dress with a, or a white blouse and you have on a dark bra. It shows through. There's nothing you can do about it. You have to change that or put something in there between it. So you have to always think about trying to make white become opaque takes layers. So the best way to do it is not to be stingy with the first layer of paint. Put it on using that tree applicator or brush and roll. You can do it two times if you'd like. And I'm going to show you that on this door. And uh, using my little caddy here, if you saw this tool, such a great and easy way to hold paint, keeping it right here in your hand. Then you can put your tools, slide them in here if you're switching in and out of the brushes and uh, hold it right in your hand just like a coffee cup. So I'm going to put on my brush coat here using our Syntec brush and I'm not being stingy with the paint. I'm going to brush on first then I'm going to come back and roll it so stay with me while we do that. Sorry for the banging. Get this going. So notice I'm not being stingy with this paint. You have to put on enough paint when I see people using whites, the biggest thing they're not doing, they are using it dry brushing it. They're not applying enough paint. I'm dipping several times, if you notice, back into my can here and picking up more paint, kind of stabbing them to the corners here to get those deep areas. Get all that. Now, you can look at that and go, that's a mess. That's okay. It's a mess. Get all the edges. Run your brush over there so you don't have any runs. I'll open this door back and take care of the ends in just a moment, but right now let's focus on this. Lay that down and you're going to pick up your little roller. This is our open cell foam roller and you think, well, I can do that with any kind of a roller. Well, you really won't get the same effect if you're going to buy a different type of roller, a different type of foam. You're going to get a different pushing of the paint rather than what we are trying to show you here. I am lightly, lightly pressing. That is where your, the magic begins. I'm not pushing to dent the roller like that. Can you see that? I'm not pushing that hard. I'm just rolling it like that. Just like that. So many times y'all saw me roll my face. You can do that. <laughs> Get a little on me. That's all right. So that's okay, but I'm lightly rolling. Very. She does get paint on her. I do. Even sometimes when I try. <laughs> okay, so there you go. Light rolling is repositioning the paint, believe it or not. It's making it have no texture. And so many people say they get texture. Well, that means you've not got on enough paint. Okay, here's a grand example. There's not enough paint here. I've talked to you too long in between. There's not enough paint for me to move this around. It's already started to dry. I'm not going to get this to solid cover here. This, remember, is my first coat. I'm not going to panic. I'm just going to continue on, do the best I can do with it. Just roll any direction, lightly roll, let this dry, call this my ugly coat. I'll come back and get it more on my second coat. Paula, can you cover why we brush first and we don't just... Roll? Yes. Oh, absolutely. That's a great one. Whenever you're using a brush, when you're using this brush particularly, this Syntec brush picks up a ton of paint and applies it to the surface. If I'm using this roller, it picks up a very little paint because it doesn't have enough ability to hold paint. It only gets it onto the surface. So you're not putting on the amount of paint by using a roller like this. The paint dries so quickly, it can't pick up enough paint and redeposit it without it starting to put texture into the paint as it dries, as it's trying to move it around. You need to move the paint around with this, where there's a lot of paint here, stays fluid because it's heavily on the surface. This thins it out so quickly, and then you're rolling over, 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 and over it. You start creating texture. So if you'll follow the brush and roll technique, get it on, 
heavy enough with your brush, position it, get it where it needs to be, and then go back and reposition it with your roller. That's the way to do it. I know so many of y'all want to do it your own way. That's great if that works for you, but if you'll follow these tips, it will help you get a great look and just a few coats without using a primer. And uh, something I want to say about primers, if you use a primer and you use a brand you know, you're going to have some texture because primers are made to do one thing. They're made to be, well, there's two kinds of primers. There's a bonding primer and a hide primer. If you use a hide primer, it's highly pigmented, meaning it's made to hide quickly. So it's going to be thick. It's almost like a marshmallow cream sometimes. But it's so high in titanium, it doesn't flow, so it creates its own texture. Now you're going to paint over that. It's going to radiate into your new paint. So if you use this paint and use it as your beginning coat, your base coat, you won't have that over build up, that texture that's going to build up as it would if you were using a primer, per se, a primer for hide. It has, the paint has its own built-in bonding primer that's superior to any bonding primer out there. So if you're buying a, a over-the-counter primer, let's say Kills or whatever brand that is, and you buy that additional primer, your uh, paint job is sitting on that quality of the primer. In other words, as good as that primer is, is as good as your paint job is. So I can't speak to whose primer you're using, so whatever the brand that is. If it's a good primer for you and you like it, you can always do it. But this is a great uh, primer and it's going to give you superior bond and it's going to not build up and make all that texture in your paint. So try it, then you'll know. So I think we're already dry here and ready for our second coat. Um, inside, yeah, I'll do that. Let me do that. Sure. Absolutely. Can you see she where I'm at here? Let me move somebody over here just a bit. Move that one just okay. a little so they can see. Just the top one there. Kick it that way. This one? There you go. Perfect. There you go. I just want to be able to see okay. inside here. All right. Good deal. I'm going to paint first, around my hinges. Uh, cleaned the cabinets well with our surface prep deglosser. And you will be able to uh, rewatch this here when it ends. You can always share it to your timeline. It's a great way to keep it. Uh, but we did not scuff sand. We did not sand. We don't like that word. It's a dirty four-letter word. We don't <laughs> do it um, unless you have damage, meaning peeling, uh, paint or varnish, uh, chipped areas in your existing paint, something like that. Then you would have to sand just those areas smooth. But other than that, you don't have to sand. So you're just going to clean it. And then we started with the base coat, and she's showing you brush and roll right now. So hopefully that catches everybody up. And so stay with us because right now we are using our artist brush here, our trim detail brush, the little angled one. This is a great little detail brush to get around hinges. It's perfect for that. And I'm getting all inside there. Like I said, have a little damp rag or a Q-tip on hand. If you get any on your hinge, <clears throat> and just get on this coat here, the first little coat, and we'll make it look great in just a sec. I'm gonna do a little brush and roll on it as well. the door, like where, uh, you know, the other side. Oh, behind. Yeah. I'll do that in just a minute for you, okay? I'll do it just so you can see where we're at. Okay. I am going to open this door back in just a sec here. Just trying to get this whole frame covered for you. So we can let it all dry and get on the second coat while we have you here. Can everybody hear well? I think they were having some problems with my mic, but I think I got it fixed. I don't know what it's doing. Okay, good deal. Confused about our surface prep deglosser versus mm -hmm. a degreaser. So Not the it same. Is, it is the same thing. It is doing the same thing. So you don't need to do a degreaser. Uh, people are specifically gotcha. about over your cabinets. You don't need to clean it with, say, Simple Green or 
dawn and water or something like that first and then do the surface recall. So you're just causing yourself some extra work that's not really necessary. Fine. So all you need to clean it with is that surface prep declosser. And do that. It takes just one good cleaning. Again, maybe the ones above your stove, especially if you fry food a lot, then you, or they're, you know, quite old cabinets that haven't been cleaned in a while, then you might need to do those twice. But for the most part, you really just need to do it one time. And I want you guys to really pay attention to how much paint Paula is putting on. Notice how many times she's dipping that brush back in. And this True. is just a standard cabinet door. It's nothing, it's not small, it's not big, it's just average. And she's already dipped in several times, so you really got to put some paint on. I think seven is our normal count. Yep, sounds right. All right, so I'm just getting it on. You could not do that with a roller, guys. There's no way you could put that much paint on with a roller. On the back of a door, just so you know, these are unfinished normally, and uh, they absorb the paint really quick. Can you see what I'm doing here? Just going to do my little quick roll here to even it out, get it to dry well, and we'll get it to look great on the next coat. So Carrie's asking if you do, if you use the dry applicator and do swipe and stipple first, what do you do for the second coat? The brush and roll. I would, if I was using white, there was no other technique. Y'all know we have a store here um, where we see a lot of folks who come in who use our products. People come from all over the country. Uh, people here today from Florida, you name it, people come from everywhere. So I love meeting couples especially. Normally the man will be pretty against uh, the wife starting to paint their cabinets. They always love wood, you know that, nothing wrong with that. I love wood too, but men aren't really up for women starting to paint because they always think they're not going to finish it and it's going to be up to them to save them and come in and finish this paint job. That's what I think. So I always spend time and talk with them and ask them, how did you start? And what did you find that was problematic? And, you know, all the questions. I want to hear how they came down the process. You know, where did they come up, you know, decide to choose this product? So, so many people say, I tried a sample. Of course, it worked for me. I showed him. He got excited about it. Here we are. You know, we came in. We wanted to touch, feel, see the paint. I wish that was possible for everyone to do. I know everyone can't make it out to our store. But the beautiful thing is, those who do, really encourage me whenever they say I was doubtful, always the husband normally, he was very doubtful. He came in, there was a couple here today, uh, they were actually from Nicholsville, Kentucky. He came with her and they carried out a whole box of paint and uh, they were here just to see because they wanted to see it in person that they had gotten a sample. So it's always good to hear and answer your questions in person, but it's a lot of the questions that we're answering here tonight and that helps me to know then what your problem areas are. So just so you know, we have it. I hope you make it out here sometime. So now we're pretty dry here and uh, let's start with coat two, okay? Let's get over here. Well, I'm gonna have you repeat my questions because they're sure. not hearing me well. On oh, of you're it. still tore up, huh? Um, can you, uh, they're, they're confused because you did both. Swipe and stipple on one, brush and roll on the other, so they're confused. Oh, do you know, I'm trying to show you both. I'm trying to show you you can do both, but I always want you to do brush and roll on, you can do it on the first and the second coat, or you can do the true applicator where I just swiped it on there and pulled for your first coat. There's no wrong or right, so don't get bent on all the I did it wrong kind of thing. That's not going to happen. You can't go wrong if you'll follow either of these. Some people paint their whole cabinets using the true applicator. That's up to you. I think it's easier and it's going to be quicker for you if you will do brush and roll where you're going to get on more paint for your second coat at least. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm going to just uh, drop our mic here on this one real quick. Bear okay. with me guys. Sorry, my hands going to go across the Facebook phone for just a second. They can hear us on Facebook. Okay. So. There we go. All right, so we're not going to go Hopefully over. that'll fix it. The problem, you think? We'll see. Can you guys hear me better now? We're on our Facebook group in the event. Okay. So are you commenting for your bundle offer that you have? Oh, no, we haven't said anything. I've posted it. Um, oh, I gotcha. can't post it on the Facebook page because, again, I'm muted for a moment here. <laughs> but uh, if you would like a coupon to, uh, if this inspires you and you're ready to paint your kitchen cabinets, We'd love to give you a 50% off coupon for our two cabinet bundle. It gives you a two quart cabinet bundle. Gives you everything that you need to paint your cabinets, including all the tools that Paul is using, the full tool trio, the detail brushes, the brush cleaner, uh, the surface prep and the paint. 
If you are painting a shade of white, you might need to add one more quart, but other than that, it should give you everything you need to paint an average kitchen for about $105 with that coupon. So just comment here and, and I'll go to our link. paint calculator. If you don't know and you think you yes. might need more, don't over order. This paint covers a tremendous amount of, uh, more than you would think. So if you've had Always. a gallon <laughs> before, you don't need a gallon of this paint. This uh, quart is going to cover 140 square feet. It'll cover a kitchen, a small kitchen. So if you don't know if two quarts gonna work for you, check out our paint calculator by visiting the website at allinonepaint.com. You'll see the paint calculator there. So you plug in your own kitchen size and the color that you're trying to use, and that will tell you how much you need before you over order. But two quarts is a great size. I think you'll be um, covering most people with an average kitchen. So uh, don't, don't, uh, don't over order is all I'm trying to yep. say. Not that we wouldn't want your business, but there's no need for you to over order. <laughs> I'll give you a door count on my own kitchen. So I painted in Stonehenge, which is a mid-tone color, not a white. I have 33 doors, 10 drawers, or 11 drawers, I think, actually, and the backside of a peninsula, and we used three quarts, and I still have some kitchen. leftover. It's a big open kitchen. It, it, it has a lot of big cabinets, two. And mine are lar yeah, well, the larger see. than normal. Yeah. yeah. Tall, large to the top, you know, main thing. How tall are they? That's going to change it for a lot of folks. Okay. Okay, they can hear us. Though. Brush they're and roll is what we're doing here over the door that we stippled on. All right, I hope you saw immediately the color change and how it already turned it white. So now I'm going to pick up my roller and smooth this out. I put on enough paint now that I can get this to start laying down. And, uh, And that's fully covered. That's fully covered. Two, four, two coats. Now, after it dries and daylight and things, you might go back and say, hey, I need a little more paint. That you have to kind of see. But right now, in this lighting, it looks fabulous in two coats. But that's because I put on enough paint, even using the true applicator. I stippled and I got all those lines out. So what causes paint to look shadowy is whenever you put on a coat and you are just brushing and you're not doing the brush and roll technique, and you're just putting it on with a cheap paintbrush, you're gonna have these swipes that show. So the next time you paint on another coat, that doesn't mean when you swipe again, that you're gonna line it up in the same area that got heavy and thick, you know, so you're never gonna catch up. So if you'll do that using this little roller, that's gonna ensure that you're gonna get nice, even coverage and make it look like that it's been sprayed on versus painted, okay? No brush marks, no brush marks. The dirty word here, brush marks. So this one is not truly ready. I'm gonna go up here and get this drawer real quick so we can get that one onto the second coat. So Paul, I know a lot of people, uh, I haven't seen this question yet today, but I might have missed it because we always get it. People ask about should they paint inside the box, like where your pots and pans sit, where your dishes sit? No, the answer to that is no. Most cabinets, fairly new cabinets, and of course I'm saying new, but that could mean they're many years old. They're melamine on the inside. Uh, they don't need to be painted. They are fake vinyl coated material. They're not wood and they just need to be cleaned and that's it. You just wipe them down good, make them look new and fresh, put some new liner in them or something, but most people never paint that. The only reason you would paint that is if you had somebody else had painted it and made it blue or something you weren't satisfied with. That would be the only real reason that you would want to paint it, but not not for, say, I'm painting my cabinets white, now I need to go paint this melamine box inside. This is a good, wearable, user-friendly surface that everybody can live with. No matter what color you're painting the outside, this should remain neutral, in my opinion. Now, you might beg to differ with it. <laughs> so, uh, we've got some people asking about dry time. So, we've been on this live for 40 minutes. Paula has already done coat two on this door. So, it's it's outside. Outside. We got inside and outside. Yes, we got the ins, the outs, we got all this in the box. About 30 minutes or so for dry time, but again, like Paula mentioned earlier, if you're painting over uh, laminate or some type of uh, like paper coating type stuff, you might need to let it dry longer, maybe even overnight. So it'll get firm and that way you won't be pulling it off as a it's only able to dry on one side. If you're painting over a vinyl sticker, it has to uh, lose the moisture from the front. Let's talk about cure times because that's something that I, yes. everybody won't see this, so this never solves the problem, but it always is a question. People are always confused by it, so I'll do my best to tell you guys. 
Whenever you paint with a waterborne product, no matter if it's this one or any other one, all require cure before they're hardened. This paint is very soft, just like a fingernail. If you went to the spa and had your nails done, the paint is very layered. It has a thickness underneath. It's spongy until it has a chance to dry. So that's not gonna happen on paint until you give it several days to dry. Now, that doesn't mean you can't use it. You just don't do a scratch test. Don't run your fingernail across it and say it's not sticking yet. It's not, uh, it's not hard like you say. It takes a while to get down, shrink down, and tighten up to where it is extremely durable like it is here. It's not going to scratch. It's not going to come off. And uh, this door is bulletproof, literally. And I think you will find that after the paint has cured, it's gonna to continue to cure as the water weeps out of it for about 30 days. And then once it's inside in your controlled environment where the moisture level is constant, you'll see that it begins to cure very quickly and harden as the days pass. So there it is, two coats on everything except the frame. And I think it looks pretty darn good for two coats. What do y'all think? Mm -hmm. I know one of the things you wanted to talk about was the kick plate. Oh, yes, let's jump over there and talk about that. So, so many people come back and say, they're gonna paint, what color should they paint the kick plate? Well, and kick plate, she's talking about down here, for those of you yes. who don't know that term. Kick plate, this doesn't even have one on it, but it does have a base down there. Okay. So normally people go back around and put all the cabinets in place, and then they put one long, continuous, nice board down there. And people call it a mop board, people call it a little of everything, but let's call it a kick plate. And I normally like to see those in a dark color, and I put them in a black, that's just normal. And you said I won't have any black in my kitchen. Well, most kitchens have black, and even when you don't even think about it, you have black in your appliances. So black is ever present in your home and ever present in a kitchen for sure. Oven doors and all those things. Even if you have stainless appliances, you will have black. So putting a black base plate down there is a nice way to make it neat. Also makes it easy for you to take care of your kitchen when you're mopping and cleaning your floor. If you paint it white, Every time that mop touches it, every time someone's shoe touches it, you're always going to be seeing it get dirty and crumbs and just a mess. So it looks pretty for a minute if you paint it white, but it's all, it's supposed to go away. It's supposed to make the cabinet look like it's uh, sitting and suspended there. So you want to paint it something that recedes and always using our color Iron Gate would make a beautiful uh, kick plate color. So that's how I would do it. So, you know, I'm sure there's, everybody's got their own school of thought there and that's okay too, but always I think dark colors will wear the best in the kitchen and the bathroom, actually. So, okay. um, Christina's wondering about the sheen of the paint because she doesn't want anything too matte, and we've also got a lot of questions about, is this a chalk paint? So you wanna answer oh, those Oh yes, two? let's answer that chalk paint question. So, <laughs> we've always said all one paint is a product. So many people uh, equate chalk paint with being something that they don't have to sand or uh, that had great bonding ability. Well, this paint has that, all of those things rolled into this awesome paint. It dries to a beautiful matte, low luster sheen, but it's not flat like chalk paint, and it's nothing like chalk paint. It doesn't have to be waxed or sealed, or uh, chalk paint requires sealers and all that to give it any kind of a sheen. This product is well beyond that. Such a huge advancement away from chalk paint. It had the look and the feel and the bonding ability of chalk paint, but it is not chalk paint and no sealer, no wax needed. So I hope that even on kitchen cabinets. cabinets. Even on kitchen cabinets. I would never use chalk paint on kitchen cabinets. It's not durable. It's more of an artist type paint, chalk paints in general. Um, but they do give great looks. So you can make pretty furniture, you can get lots of different uh, distressed looks and so on out of an unfinished paint like a chalk paint. They're beautiful and uh, wax makes them look great. So this had that uh, allure of that, meaning that low luster sheen and had a wax look to it almost. So that's kind of where our name gets in there with chalk paint. People get confused a little bit. So no sanding, but it doesn't require sealer like chalk paint. It's extremely durable and it works for interior and exterior projects. So there's no confusion about what you need, what you not gotta go buy, all that. And it's not matte, it's not, it's not uh, gloss. It's uh, somewhere in between. What was that green door? Hand me that teal this door. One? Sure. Yes, is that, what was that, spruce? Yes. Like. These are just some demo doors. These girls have been around here changing colors on 40 It's minutes, not, but it's I not just fully painted. Just, <laughs> well, the edges aren't painted. I just wanted you to see the, the sheen on it. You can see, see the sheen? Not flat. Definitely not what I call matte. 
I call it a velvet sheen. It has a glow, not a gloss. So that is a great thing to note whenever you're painting uh, walls, especially. But our paint paints walls, paints furniture, whatever you're trying to paint, cabinets, of course, but uh, countertops as well. But you don't have, whenever you have a gloss to a paint, say you're painting something high gloss, for instance, not our products, but a gloss, you're going to see every defect, every kind of a dent in the paint, every, or in the wall, or whatever you're painting over, gloss will radiate any defects. So uh, in a door that has grain and you put a gloss, you're going to see the grain highly. So think in those terms. That's why matte and low luster sheens do so well because they make things look, uh, they kind of take away all the blemishes and they really make things look modernized and even things that might have a little damage to them or the surface isn't perfect, it makes things look amazing. So I, if you are not in our group, uh, many of you here, I know you guys are in our group. If you're not in our group, I hope you come over, ask us here, we'll send you a link to join our great group and uh, come over and check out our paint. You can see for yourself what we're talking about here by getting our free sample. Try it on something, take something from your garage, maybe something that you haven't thought about painting. Give uh, it a test and see for yourself what you think about using it. We do have that code right now for anyone who's interested in trying the paint or even getting in on our two quart bundle. Right now you can use the code SAVE50 and add that two quart bundle to your cart using the code SAVE50. You're gonna get 50% off. You're gonna get two quarts of our paint, a pint of our deglosser, and you're gonna get the tools that I shared with you here tonight, our tool trio. You're gonna get the true applicator. You're gonna get two of those. You're gonna get our wonderful Syntec brush right here. And the painting nice brush as well as the wonderful little paint ease. This helps you hold and grip the brush. Also, it makes it easier for cleanup. It keeps that head of that brush clean so you don't get paint up into the furrow of your brush. And uh, it helps you here to kind of hook it on your hand and not have to grip so hard when you're using, when you're painting with it. Uh, you're also going to get the, brush uh, the, oh, you're gonna get the brush cleaner and you're gonna get a two pack of our rollers here. So I hope this has been a, pl a place that you feel comfortable about using paint products to update and transform your home. And I hope you are going to get started using our products tonight and taking us up on that Save 50 offer. And you can also, can they use that code for any other bundles? They can for every bundle in you the project bundles category. category. So if you've already purchased our paint products and you want to get another bundle, you can use Save 50 and get the shower bundle, any um, of the other bundles, stairwells, so it's not just for the two quart yeah. bundles. So if you're looking for others, you want to mix and match the paint. It doesn't have to be two quarts of the same color and uh, whatever. It but is. it does only work on the bundles. Only on bundles. So say 50 is the code, no space in between. And you can go to allinonepaint.com and check it out. Check us out on the free sample offer as well. Thank you all so much for being here with us. And of course, comment below. We'll keep answering your questions, checking back here. This will be a video that will stay right here in this group. We'll put it into a video for everyone here on Facebook as well. So thank you all so much. We appreciate your time. Bye. Bye.